So a problem YouTubers have often, smaller YouTubers is keeping viewers watching their videos. And we can learn a lot, can't we, from retention graphs. This is something you do a lot. Um, and you've got some graphs with us today that you typically see. Let's look through some of these retention graphs and see what they tell you about the video and, and how these videos can be improved, if that's okay with you. Of course, yeah. There are patterns that you can kind of observe. Uh, and some of them are easier to pick apart than others. Um, and this one that we're looking at on screen now is, is one of the most common ones and one of the ones that you can say with some certainty what the issue is. Um, mm -hmm. So again, to describe the graph, essentially, if you're seeing this kind of spiky spikiness that we saw uh, with the graph we were looking at just now, but particularly when the spikes line up with the dotted gray lines, which are essentially the, the video chapters. Okay. So this like these spikes indicates, here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, these are all moments that your viewers are skipping ahead to, uh, and it essentially indicates that they don't feel the need to fully stick around in between each of these points, and they're regularly skipping ahead to get more information in more quickly. Um, mm -hmm. This could be for a couple of reasons. It could be that you're taking too long to deliver the information, but uh, a lot of the time, and this is particularly an issue with listicle videos, um, it's that the tendency is to assume you should deliver the information as you would in a conversation where you make the point and then you start explaining the point. Um, the issue with this is that it gives the viewer complete permission to skip ahead, particularly when the point is very easily understood in a matter of seconds. Um, very conscious of now <laughs> laboring this point for exactly the same reason uh, is that in a sentence, if I've understood what the point on the listicle is or whatever the point you just made is, you don't just spend mm -hmm. two minutes discussing it. So the way okay. that I encourage people to fix this um, and it tends to work fairly well and we can talk about it. Uh, there's an example that is below this graph uh, where I kind of uh, implemented that in a uh, creator booth video. Cool. Is you literally just a second. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you just swap the information around. Uh, and so you can do that in a number of ways. It could be that you uh, kind of hint at what the point is and then spend a little bit of time giving some context and then explaining what you're talking about. So that's kind of delaying the payoff essentially. Or in the style of creator booth, film booth, you can do a kind of a metaphor or, or something that doesn't make it quite clear what it is that we're about to build up to, but it's something that is uh, visually engaging or mentally stimulating or something that gets you watching without mm -hmm. yet giving you the payoff. And again, it's tricky because you okay. don't want to, you're not trying to play with people in the way that you're uh, just saying, I'm not going to tell you what this information is right until the very end, because people will get bored mm -hmm. with that and they will click away. But it really can be as simple as where you start by giving what the point is, literally just move that sentence to the end of that segment of the video and see mm. if it still flows. And if it does still flow, that's going to be probably a more efficient way of, of doing it. Yeah. So when people typically start a chapter and they know it instantly, like they find out instantly what that chapter is about and the information that's going to be uh, delivered in that chapter, they skip ahead mm -hmm. because they've got no more reason to to watch that mm -hmm. chapter. So what you're saying is find a way to not make it immediately obvious what information the chapter is going to provide by rearranging the flow of information, but also still make it interesting enough to keep people watching and not lose interest in the whole video. Mm -hmm. is, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's, that's really interesting. I've seen this done a lot with... Um, I follow a YouTube channel called Game Ranks, uh, and they do a lot of listing mm -hmm. videos, like 10 best games of 2023 so far. Um, mm -hmm. But instead of naming their chapters, they'll just have, they'll call the chapter number one, number two, number three. Yeah. So you can't visually see what the chapter's about. And uh, and then I've also seen some credit. I think Ali does this as well sometimes. They, use, they have kind of like vague, ambiguous names for their chapters. Mm -hmm. So like, rather than like, do this, it'll be um the the 30 20 rule but people mm. won't know what that rule is and they have to watch the chapter to understand what it is um yeah so yeah yeah pretty well, much what that's kind of the, it's that's like yeah that's kind of the the second half of it is making sure once you've done the work on the script you don't then just give it away in the title cards anyway but i was sure. consulting with or doing doing some consulting with um ali's team fairly recently and despite the fact they do often do well at not giving away what it is from the chapter alone they will sometimes still start the segment by saying the 30 20 rule is blah blah blah, blah mm -hmm. and then they'll talk about it for okay. a minute and it's like you the mistake is still mistake but you know what i mean it's still there 
Um, so it's partly in not giving away in the chapter, but also in how you construct the the script. Um, it's like a two part gotcha. operation. So there's an art form to doing it right, and mm -hmm. you helped Ed from Film Booth from Creative Booth put this video together, and you believe this video is a, a good example of how to do it uh, correctly. Okay. Um, so yeah, the thing first, initially, I mean, this is maybe a slightly separate point, but the very first thing um, we're doing with this video is uh, we're starting out by asking the audience a direct question. Um, it's not yet clear what we're talking about in relation to the video, but it's immediately something that is going to engage the viewer and uh, get them actively paying attention, actively participating, if you like, in the video. Um, so yeah, okay. we'll just we'll play it and you can see what Great. Yeah, let's watch that and see this in action. Look at these numbers on screen. This is the revenue generated in one month by three different YouTubers that I know. And these are their subscriber counts, which I'm going to put in a random order for you now. I want you to guess which channel is making which amount of money, and then I'm going to give you two more seconds before I reveal the answer. Surprised? One of the main reasons I started this channel was because I wanted to... Okay. Um, so what did we see there, so, George? What was that an example of? Yeah, so... Um, like I said beforehand, initially, it's asking the audience a direct question. It's getting them involved in the video, making them a participant. Um, there are also a lot of kind of editing choices that the guys made on the other end. So immediately, it's like a sort of little pop sound effect uh, as soon as the question happens. There was also, Ed said, a very deliberate choice to leave the uh, answer on screen for not very much time uh, because that would, again, make people sort of like pause, check it out, go back, uh, almost like, you know, re-reviewing -re the information that they've just taken in. Um, okay. But the main point of this intro is that we're creating a puzzle for the viewer, which is, is not yet clear why we're talking about it at all. We haven't given any context to this, but it's sure. something that is interesting for YouTubers because it's like, oh, it's money and it's all oh, sub counts. And oh, it's probably not going to be obvious. It's not going to be the smallest amount of money is made by the smallest sub count. But, but if not, then how is it that someone with maybe very few subscribers is making loads of money? And uh, so all these questions, it opens so many curiosity gaps uh, straight yeah. away. Um, and then again, we show them the answer, but we don't explain why that is. And still, we don't yet have context for what the video is going to be, but it's a very kind of engaging uh, start to the video, essentially. Um, sure. So again, well, that's, that's so interesting. Like separate. Oh, sorry, Greg, go on. I was just going to say, wow, that's so interesting. And I'm sure a lot of smaller YouTubers would be surprised that there's creators out there thinking about this stuff in this much detail. Um, so yeah, mm. it's great to have you here and give us a little glimpse behind the curtain, how all this of works. Course. But that was, yeah, I should say that that's kind of uh, almost a separate point. But then the, as for what we were discussing just before about reversing the order of information, I think if you watch just mm. the next bit up to the first mm. payoff, as it were, the first kind of reveal, um, you might see a bit more about what I was talking about with with reversing that information. Um, so I think if you probably okay. play till about 40 seconds, uh, you'll actually, it'll, it'll say myth one, um, whatever it says. So yeah. Cool. You, you, you tell me when to stop. We'll jump in now and just give me the heads up when to stop. Cool. Surprised? One of the main reasons I started this channel because I wanted to open people's eyes to just how much business savvy YouTube channels are making without having millions of subscribers or millions of views. Because the reality is most of the YouTubers I talk to make 10 times less than they desire because their beliefs about YouTube monetization are all wrong. So in this video, I'm going to debunk those beliefs so you can start earning what you deserve faster. So how have those small channels done it? Well, it's because they don't focus all their energy on getting more views, but instead better marketing and better systems that help generate revenue from the views they do get. And that's the first myth you need to forget about on YouTube. Views does not equal more money. I mean, sure, the there big is. entertainment channels get... Okay, that was it. Cool. Yeah. So what essentially we're doing there is once we get past that kind of little game at the start, we're then starting to address more directly audience objections, audience uh, preconceptions, if you will. So immediately we're saying uh, to back up that little game we did at the start, YouTubers that make the most money don't necessarily have the most views. Oh, interesting. Why would that be? Um, and the reason for that is now we widen the curiosity gap a lot more because the beliefs that a lot of YouTubers have around monetization are all wrong. And so immediately I'm thinking, right, I don't know what these things are whatever my preconceived beliefs are about YouTube monetization, I'm in this moment uncertain if they are right or wrong because I'm being told that they could well be wrong. Um, sure. And then I'm shown the exact transformation that I'm going to get by the end of the video. It's going to be whatever those preconceived notions I have. 
they're going to be debunked or I'm going to feel enlightened so that I can more effectively monetize my YouTube channel. And once we've kind of gone through all of that stuff, we then reveal that this myth, the first myth that we're talking about is more views does not equal more money. And yeah. that's nearly a minute in before we've had that first little wow. payoff. Whereas what I think a lot of people would do would be in this video, we're going to debunk five myths about YouTube or YouTube monetization, starting with myth number one, more views does not equal more money. And then we talk about it for a minute and I've got it. I, I, I understand. Like, I don't need, I don't need you to tell me for a minute why that is the case. I can sort of start to intuit it. Um, so that's just an example of how simply reversing that order of information can do wonders for retention. Yeah, that second example you gave of the typical YouTuber, yeah, you're skipping on you as soon as that chapter starts. Yeah. You know what the chapter's about, you're on to the next chapter, then the next one. Yeah. So the overall watch time for the video is, is way lower. Yeah. So exactly. interesting. So it sounds like you're just playing with a delicate balance of building curiosity and sort of like establishing payoff, but delaying the reveal. Uh, is that fair to yeah. say? You, you, yeah, it is that, but it, and uh, this is it can sound almost a little bit, uh, yeah, like g gimmicky or uh, almost a bit disingenuous to withhold that information. But I think honestly, it, it creates a more enjoyable experience for the viewer. Um, I was working uh, very briefly with um, she, uh, she runs a graphic design channel. I don't know if she want me to mention her name, so I won't mention her name. Um, but uh, she actually taught me something really interesting when I was looking through her kind of scripting template. Um, she had these kind of notes on like what we want to achieve in X part of, the, uh, part of the video and what we want to achieve here and what we want to achieve here. And the phrase she used was, we want the viewer to feel smart. And the issue with giving away that information super, super fast is that the viewer gets it and they get bored and they move on. Whereas when we're actively taking time to engage their brain in a way that doesn't give away all the answers, it gradually gives people the chance to work out what it is that we're going to be talking about and mm. makes them feel smarter when they start to figure it out as you build towards the reveal rather than giving all that information away and making them think, well, I got it. I'm skipping. Um, yeah. So it's a more rewarding experience for you and them, I suppose. I suppose that makes them more active viewers. They're, they're mm. constantly figuring things out for themselves and having a closer engagement with the video throughout it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly.